than here on Y254. The adrenaline in those cars is something you do not want to miss. And you've got a chance at 2 p.m. from today, you can go to Ngara Sports Club and learn everything when it comes to Safari Rally. It is the fans right now here on the Touchdown. And I'm joined by two sports analysts, Samuel Monanjuguna. It has been a long time. Welcome back to the Touchdown, man. Thank you so much, man. Uh, I miss the place. Uh, I miss the team. Yeah. Of course, we are here to analyze the games. Yeah. Good one for us. Fredo Penda, a big game that is coming our way between Liverpool and Newcastle. But before we discuss everything that has been happening when the games are coming up, it seems that this weekend is mostly about injuries. Almost every team has one player who is not going to be in the field of play. Exactly. One, 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 one key player. That one is, key player, uh, actually. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we can see uh, the legs of United, uh, Arsenal, Chelsea. We, they have some... Uh, some suspensions and some injury concerns. Now uh, it, it, it's all. Uh, uh, it comes up to the manager to see how he juggle around with, with who's available yeah. uh, for for the afternoon. And then remember, we've just come back from the international break, yes. so we have a, a, a stretch of games that uh, if you're not gonna get your your, your players back uh, fit uh, quickly, then you might uh, you might suffer in, in the next let's say uh, from fatigue in the next uh, five games yeah. because uh, the, the the international break comes around uh, October, mm -hmm. so uh, it's 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 now uh, up to the managers to juggle around with the players they have, but ensure that uh, they they avoid fatigue. Uh, let, let and and being that now we are coming back for, uh, to the uh, Champions League uh, group stages uh -huh, yes. and the Europa uh, yeah. uh, group stages. So it's games that we are going to have a lot of matches coming week in week out, and players have to be fit. But let's start with Liverpool are starting their game against Newcastle this afternoon at Anfield, and for them. It is a, a return of Alisson who is actually not ready. But it doesn't look to be a problem for Liverpool so far. I mean, when you have Virgil van Dijk, man, it, it's just it's just kind of meets everything because uh, Gomez is back for them, yes. and he he but him partnering with Virgil van Dijk is it makes a stronger defense, and of course they also have Matic, whom they have extended his contract, so uh, they are kind of safe. But uh, I think the bigger problem with Liverpool right now is Mo Salah and Mane. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know what happened last week; <laughs> they, <are laughs> they played together, yeah, yeah. and it's it's something that is uh, quickly becoming a problem for them because if Salah cannot give the ball to Mane, mm -hmm. and it means also Mane will be hesitant to give the ball to Salah. <laughs> yeah. and this has been the, the forward line that has been most enviable in the world uh, after Neymar, Suarez and Messi. Yeah. Now, uh, looking at it from that perspective, I think uh, Newcastle United cannot provide much of difficulty for them. Uh, of course, they won against Tottenham, we cannot deny that, but their defensive play will be easy for Liverpool to break. Of course, they have the likes of, of Fabinho, who are the protective shield for Adrian, also, although Adrian has also been making quality saves also. So, I think this is a game for Liverpool to lose. I, it's, it's on their cards. If, if they just turn up, whether Salah doesn't give the ball to Mane, Keita, will, Keita is not in also. The, the, the question will be, it is a positive rivalry or a negative rivalry, and how will it impact the team going forward? Because I, I, we have think, already seen it. I think it's it's a positive one because yeah. uh, the reaction uh, is what I can say was negative, but yeah. the rivalry is, is okay. I, I don't understand why when people come uh, out and say Salah was selfish. If you are a top notch striker, yeah. then you, 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 I mean, you, you I, have to I know mean, that. Openda, openda, yes. Let's be honest here. Mm -hmm. uh, the first instance, mm -hmm. Salah was to give the ball to Firmino. Mm -hmm. He took the chance himself, missed. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. The second time, Mane was in a better position. He took the chance and missed again. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're talking about a team, it doesn't matter whether you're leading three goals to nil. Mm -hmm. That is selfishness, pure selfishness. And and if you if you compare last season and this season, the fact that Mane had 22 goals, uh, Mo Salah had 22 goals, of course Salah wants to be the only kingpin in the team. And the problem, it is become, it's going to become toxic over time. But because these two people will be trying one, one to question get is, each other. I, I get your point, but one question is, yeah. Oh, why are people not talking about the goals Salah scored against Arsenal? Uh -huh. Oh, it was a wonder goal. Why, why, why people? Uh, why are, not, are they not saying that? Why did he not pass to to, to Mane? He went he, himself, he went and, himself scored. and scored. You see, so the to be a top notch striker, yeah. you have to be sure with yourself. Of course, it was a bad day. I can yeah. I, I, I can say that. But what if he scored? You know, then people would have been uh, uh, around praising him. That this you know, he's gone uh, out and, and, and split this the, the defense and scored. This is the thing. When, 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 mm -hmm. Let's go 
back to the top three strikers that mm-hmm. we have talked about Messi, mm-hmm. Suarez, and Neymar. Mm-hmm. There's a time when Messi had a penalty mm-hmm. and Suarez was looking for one goal so that he can win the golden boot. What did Messi do? He knocked the ball up for Suarez to score. Mm-hmm. He didn't take the penalty. That's the kind of player that Messi is. Of course, Salah is being compared with them right now. So if you're talking about Salah being selfish, you're talking about those opportunities that are clear cut. If, if somebody is free and you're tight, you, people are getting tight on you because you're the player that everyone wants to mark. Mm-hmm. Money is free. Just keep the ball. That's that's all you're saying. You know, and if he takes the chance and scores, <laughs> okay, we'll celebrate. It's a wonderful goal. It, 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 when you're on the pitch, yeah. it's not like us fans watching from the stands. Yeah. You know, that guy is in motion, yeah. and he sees a chance that I can I can take, and he did it. And I cannot blame him. And next time, trust me, if he'll need to do that, he will do it mm-hmm. because he's a top-notch uh, striker, and he has uh, he has uh, shown us that he can score from those kind of uh, situations. So. I think it's a, a rivalry that we are going to it's see the how it pans out. The problem yeah. will be Manchester City mm-hmm. are a team that doesn't have selfishness at the moment. If Aguero sees Bernardo Silva is in a better position, he gives the ball to, to what Bernardo about Silva. Sterling? What about Sterling? <laughs> of course, it's a different game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the thing. This is the thing. Yeah. Is, chasing, is chasing Manchester City, right? Yeah, so, exactly. of course, despite them being two points ahead, they know Manchester City is the team to beat. So, I think at the moment, they, they should try and get every goal, score every goal they can, take every chance they can. And if Salah wasting that chance, I mean, if Man is in a better position to score that goal, let him score because if you have toxic- toxicity within your team it's going to be a problem for them to challenge Manchester City and that's the end goal the end goal is to try and win the league this season for them so I don't think that will be helping when a, Mane a, a throws big, his hands a big one for Liverpool there for Jurgen Klopp and how he's going to deal with those two players but we have got also a game that will be coming over at 5 that is Manchester United versus Leicester City and Manchester United will be without 7 key players that is Paul Pogba Anton Martial Look show Diogo Dalot, Eric Bailey, Jesse Lingard, and Aaron Guan Bissaka. Big problem. When you look at those <laughs> names, all of them out on the field, they are not actually even on the bench. They are actually in the clinic. They are actually at the hopes of being treated. I think. How does this work on for Solskjaer? How, how is he going to name a team that is going to come and go against Leicester, considering that Leicester is actually top on their game at the moment. Of course, uh, what what will be uh, a bigger problem for United will be that defence, yeah. and not having a uh, show uh, at the left-back position, and uh, uh, missing uh, the uh, England international, one Bissaka, yeah. the right-back, will be a big problem, especially knowing that uh, uh, we have a very fast player I- I- in uh, Vardy, who can uh, maybe even uh, try to see, uh, just remain uh, as a a lone ranger up front so as to get the the, the, the balls in from his own yeah. box we mm-hmm. see uh, we, we saw him scoring a very very uh, good goal in the last uh, round of fixtures so uh for for, for 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 united it's high time now for the legs of young to step up and uh, ensure that uh, uh you are playing at home you have the the, the 12th man in in, in the fans mm-hmm. and try to show why you are uh, wearing the united shirt uh, uh if they can't be able to do that then i i don't think uh, maybe they, they they want uh, Ole to stay on the job because <laughs> <laughs> if, if if they cannot if they cannot rise up to the occasion exactly if yeah. they cannot now rise it is up actually now playing for the manager and playing for the club at exactly, the same time exactly exactly because mm-hmm. january is here and if you are not going to get points at home against the teams like Leicester, yeah. then trust me you 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 are uh, drawing your own downfall and wow. for the manager also I think I think Leicester is a team to envy at the moment. Yeah. Um, look at James Madison in there, T. Lemons in there. You've got Jamie Vardy, a man who is very clinical. But having said all that, I think Manchester United have a better record against Leicester. And yes, we know they're missing over eight players. This is a chance for those people who have been saying Paul Pogba has been has been giving the ball away so much. Yet that is not really even the case. Uh, but um, of course, this is a chance for the likes of Fred. Um, Marcos Rojo will be sorted back in the left back position yeah, as Young moves to the right. This is a chance for these players who haven't had enough time to play. But Leicester City will be a team to hurt Manchester United, more so Jamie Vardy. And Madison can get the ball to Jamie Vardy, putting the ball in the channels. Jamie Vardy is willing to run. Maguire is not the fastest man on earth. Ashley Young is not <laughs> the fastest Actually, man. Actually, the, uh, one of the big problems this afternoon, you will see uh, Maguire having a very, very hard time going up against Vardy. Because we, 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 you watched the last time out England uh, considered... <laughs> Three goals at home against a team that we 
not expect even to score a goal. Yeah. Uh, in, well, but I think, so, I think that it's, it's, it's going to be more of um, the bigger question between the two centre backs, Lindelof and Maguire, has been about covering and who takes exactly. charge. Because Maguire mm-hmm. wants to take charge, but he doesn't inform Victor Lindelof. Oh. And Victor Lindelof loves falling back. So I think it, today it's about if Maguire chooses to man Jamie Vardy, let him get close to him. Don't exactly. give him space. So Don't let him spin. Because the moment he spins, that, you cannot you, get him. Then you cannot get him, exactly. Well, mm-hmm. Big match there between Manchester United and Ma- Leicester City. That match will be at 5 p.m. But also you've got big matches at 5 p.m. Tottenham versus Crystal Palace. You've got Wolverhampton Wanderers versus Chelsea. And then Norwich City versus Manchester City at Carroll Road. But also this big game between Tottenham and Crystal Palace. How do you think that one will pan out? This is a derby. Yeah. London derby. And and you know the story of derby is... Uh, is uh, Having uh, Crystal Palace having their main man uh, back uh, in Zaha, I think uh, will will give them problems. Especially that uh, now uh, uh, Newcastle uh, did show Crystal Palace that actually you can get uh, uh, points uh, away to Tottenham. Yeah. So uh, it's it, it it will uh, be a, 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 a game that if. Uh, Ericsson is going to be uh, slated back into the team, see what, what he can bring in, into the table. But if he, he cannot uh, work his magic, then I think Tottenham might be able to uh, struggle a little bit. Uh, but, still, uh, yeah, but still maybe go on and uh, get the, the three points that they, they require. This is not the start that Mauricio Pochettino expected for his yeah. team. And, and yes, we're talking about a team that finished third to uh, Liverpool and Manchester City, two clubs that were so good last season. Um, I think come in, Dombele will be back for them this afternoon. Yeah, and that exactly. is a very big plus in the midfield. And Ericsson must play today because uh, breaking down Crystal Palace, will, uh, Crystal Palace won't be easy. Um, you can go back to the game against Manchester United, how Crystal Palace lined up. Yeah. They, were one man, they, they, they were playing with one man up front. All the other 10 men were behind the ball. And that means breaking them down is quite complex. So I think tonight is a game whereby uh, Christian Ericsson must play that kill a pass and take their chances if Tottenham do get them. Because they're ninth position, right now they need to catch up to Manchester City and Liverpool. Because if they don't do that, then we will see the likes of Leicester City continuing to enjoy the fourth place they're in today. When you're a big team, these are the kind of matches you don't want to go against, considering that Crystal Palace can take points away from you. We saw it do it against Man City, we did it against Liverpool, Man United also, and this game is going to be one tough match. But also, a big match is it a test for Frank Lampard this afternoon <laughs> against one. Wolves? A big one, a big one. Uh, especially knowing what the Wolves have done before uh, and uh, the team that uh, uh, is available for selection for uh, Frankie. Yeah. Then I think uh, it's going to be a very, very big uh, test. If if he can be able to pass it then to uh, th- this afternoon, yeah. then I think uh, now the young lads are, are, are c- c- catching up with the big boys of the Premier League. But uh, that being said, uh, Frankie has a very very good uh, good good squad. Although yeah, uh, maybe we can see that uh, Mason Mount is 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 playing very well at the moment. Uh-huh. Abraham is getting the goals that we that, that we are envying, and uh, maybe uh, a few with with, with uh, I think Rudiga should be able to come back for them this afternoon, uh, and that will add a little bit of experience in that uh, defense and. Uh, a few other players that uh, uh, will be able to, will be game changers in that game. So I think if uh, Frankie and the young lads uh, give uh, give their all, then uh, they might be able to pass the test. The, the, the although, doubt. although although <laughs> I, 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 st- I still doubt it. I would like to hear his <laughs> prediction on that. Though. <laughs> I think there's no doubt the fact that uh, uh, Frank Lampard has, has had a, t- a TLC team that is very young. But Tammy Abraham has been impressive. Four goals so far. He's chasing the likes, the likes of um, Sterling and, and, of course, uh, Aguero. But the bigger chance of tonight will be all eyes will be on Wolves because they, 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 have, had, they have three points and all of them have been draws. Yeah. So today are they going for a draw or are they going for a win? For a win. And, and, and it is, uh, they're celebrating 160 years at the Molenex Stadium. That, that means they want to mark the day historically um, on the good books of a win. So, and they will be missing Bolly. I think they will be missing Bolly, who was red-carded. Yeah, so, Bolly is out. 
This is a this is a this is a game where by Chelsea must be uh, on top game. They don't have Ngolo Kante, <coughs> yeah, um, but, but they will be, uh, the Kovacic you should be coming back for them. But mm-hmm. yeah, I, I think this is a game Wolves will be chasing. I think if I was to go for a prediction, two one in favor of Wolves. <laughs> the fools. Um, but and, I, and I think also uh, uh, Emerson limped off uh, yeah. uh, in the game uh, for uh, 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 yeah the last international game. Yeah. Uh, he limped off for Italy, but. Maybe he might be able to come uh, back so off they, they have for, an option for the Alonso, team, yeah. which is a good, uh, is a good uh, option. Also a good replacement. So, uh, but the biggest ch- problem with Chelsea has been there. They have been letting in many goals because they have scored six goals and they have conceded nine. The, so high, the second they, highest in the league. So um, that, that has been their biggest problem with, uh, with I think it's Rudiger the coming back. It, it's Antonio Rudiger is coming but, back. Yeah, yeah. The, the question I'll ask uh, is, what is... Antonio Rodriguez going to add into that difference that might be a change this afternoon. Actually, the, it's just the experience because these young lads, and especially that now that they're missing Kant in that midfield, they need that leadership in the defense. So if 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 uh, they, they they are going to get him, then he can be able to organize the defense and the, maybe the the the, the defensive midfield. But, or, although the, although they don't have Golo Kant who was actually playing so well in that position until the, <laughs> the guy from Italy came in I, but I think and changed his position. This, this season gave Jorginho his rightfully deal. <laughs> he has been playing very well this season. Uh, but I think what Antonio Rudiger will add in this team is more of maturity because if you look at Kat Zuma and Klinstersen, both of them are very young. The best combination for Frank Lampard in the central defense is Klinstersen and Rudiger. Wow. Zuma, his reactions sometimes are a bit off. So the, the, and, and then his pace. Rudiger is, is a bit uh, fast. Penalties. He is a bit faster than Zuma. So that, mm-hmm. that will help uh, the team. And I, th- I still think, um, although we maybe haven't been on this panel, we, still, we should talk about the biggest misses of the summer. How do you let David Luiz go to Arsenal? That, that, that's a big miss. In the last day, of the, you and, don't have a chance to sign. And knowing that you, you don't have a chance to sign, and, and then you're bringing that, back that, Inzuma, who's, who's been error-prone, actually, yes, that, since he came back. And, but but you still can argue that uh, Lampard mm. is trying to make his own team in his own way, in his own right. Uh, but, it doesn't, it doesn't okay, matter. You, it's okay, but you don't have a chance to sign. So <laughs> keep exactly. keep David Lewis who is experienced, a player who has been tested, uh, tried and tested in the APL. He has proven himself. That's a player you want to keep, even if you won't play him in every game. At least keep him in that team, and and at least you can see. David Lewis coming into the Arsenal defense, what he has done is a bit of that calmness. Even if he will, he, will, he did whatever he did to Mo Salah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that, that penalty was so soft. Mm-hmm. It was so soft. You're an Arsenal fan. Come on, yeah. You're an Arsenal fan. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. But uh, he, he does have a bit of calmness, that maturity whereby I know when to go. And if he gets a chance to take a free kick, you know how he does exactly, it. Yeah, you, yeah. you know, he's it's somebody who can hurt you in one in one in more than one way. His balls, his long balls are better than Kat, can Katsuma do that. Yeah. You see, so <laughs> a big one there for Chelsea this afternoon, uh, this evening actually, as they'll be away to Wolves, and we'll see how that match will go. Considering that for the last two seasons, Old Rampton Wanderers have been a team to watch and a marvel to watch as they play. Big match also coming at Carroll Road between Norwich City and Manchester City. Manchester City, the only lose. Lamport and it's big news. It's an injury crisis for Manchester City. <laughs> it's yet. not. It's not. That. Actually, that's uh, that's fun. Those are fanatics because they are very very able uh, uh, guys who can replace uh, Laporte in that uh, defense. Yeah. Uh, actually, even Fernandinho can can, can play in that uh, central de- uh, defense. So uh, for for them uh, and uh, and that the uh, the game uh, that uh, uh, Guardiola plays being an at- attacking one. I don't think they'll be having uh, a lot of uh, problems. Stones is in that team. Uh, the, the, the biggest impact with with Laporte is that he can carry the ball forward. He's the defender in the EPL last season. He was the, the central defender who carried the ball highest. He he has accurate passes and he's very calm at the defense and he's very fast uh, also. So I think that that is a big miss. John Stones can play the ball but not as good as Laporte. So he can fill in the gap for a while. Again, they are playing Norwich City and they will dismantle them, of course. Uh, of course, uh, but but there. There is that man, one Pookie. man called Puki, who's, uh, who's I, I think is one of the most uh, uh, lethal strikers currently in, uh, in European football. They should be able to watch out uh, for, for for the guy because if they give him space, then he'll be able to nick him a goal or two. As we wind up, the big game will be tomorrow also between FC Bournemouth and Everton. The signings of Everton do they give you 
confidence that ever exactly. the team to watch this season. Yeah, they 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 are performing the likes of Iwobi. They they, they they are carrying the, the 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 ball for for Everton uh, as it stands. So it's it's a time uh, uh, we give them a chance and see how they are gelling under the manager. Yeah, yes. the new one. Mm -hmm. And then the big game tomorrow between Watford and Arsenal. Big changes for Watford. You fire, you bring back Garcia. <laughs> Do they have a chance against Arsenal? Uh, and, and they don't stand a chance. I think the manager will take time to 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 rebuild the team. He doesn't have Troy Dini, but a big part of his his gameplay. So it is a game and, for Arsenal that is that already on an Arsenal part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys don't have Lacazette. I don't have Lacazette, but right now I have, I, I, I have a young man in Nelson who can yeah. uh, uh, we can we can bring Aubameyang to the centre forward position. And Nicolas Pepe uh, in there. Uh, Pepe can uh, uh, play from the right, and then we have Rhys Nelson who can uh, come in from the left, yeah. and then if we have a Sebalos there uh, to, to supply those balls and a Torreira yeah. and Zaka, uh, maybe Zaka, Zaka should be taking off sometime uh, yeah, yeah. in the coming weeks. But we have again Luzi who has also shown that uh, he can he can perform in that midfield. So so uh, what has been a miss for us for a very very long time that the manager is trying to solve right now is the defensive game of Arsenal. We got to uh, we got a, a good uh, a left back in Tiene who is now come uh, come back into full training and Bellerin is also back from injury back in, in into full training. So if we we get those uh, guys fully fit in the yeah. next two three weeks, then I think we, we should be able to How see a, a different game. How do you think that match will go? Arsenal, uh, what for Arsenal? Yeah. I think I want to win for Arsenal. Um, I'm going to give Arsenal three one. Yeah. Uh, that one goal is for uh, that Kuto you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot, Samuel Monanjuguna and Fredo Penda for coming here for the touchline. That has been the end of the fun zone here on the touchline. As we promised you, we'll be speaking to the president of the Kenya Rugby Union to tell us some of the good news that they have had in the rugby circle so far. For now, that's the end of the fun zone. We're taking a short commercial break. When we come back, it is our big interview here on the touchline.